The FTTD method. The finite difference time domain FTTD method is used to solve Maxwell's equations in the time domain. The equations are solved numerically on a discrete grid in both space and time, and derivatives are handled with finite differences. It does not make any approximations or assumptions about the system, and, as a result, it is highly versatile and accurate. Since it solves for all vector components of the electric and magnetic fields, it is a fully vectorial simulation method. Because it is a time domain method, FDTD can be used to calculate broadband results from a single simulation. FDTD is typically used when the feature size is on the order of the wavelength. This wavelength scale regime, where diffraction, interference, coherence, and other similar effects play a critical role, is called wave optics. When the feature sizes are much larger than the wavelength, other methods, such as ray tracing, are more efficient. A simple example where we can see the difference between wave optics and ray tracing is this triangular pattern etched in a material with a refractive index of 1.5. This type of structure is commonly used as an efficient reflective coating because light is always incident at 45 degrees to the normal, which is above the critical angle for total internal reflection, and therefore we expect the device to reflect 100% of the incident light. We can run an FTTD simulation to see what happens for two different wavelengths. In the first, the incident wavelength is 400 nanometers, or 0.4 microns, while the structure is 20 microns in pitch, or period. Since the structure is much larger than the wavelength, we typically would simulate with ray tracing. As we run the FTTD simulation, we can see the result we expect from the ray optics analysis, namely, that almost all of the light is reflected. The second wavelength we will use is 4 microns, and the structure has the same 20 micron pitch. Now we can see completely different behavior because there is clearly a substantial transmission, and we can even see the penetration of the evanescent field into the air. To correctly solve the second wavelength, we need a method like FDTD. FDTD is a general and versatile technique that can deal with many types of problems. It can handle arbitrarily complex geometries and makes no assumptions about, for example, the direction of light propagation. It has no approximations other than the finite size mesh and finite size time step. Therefore, it is very accurate. As a time domain method, one simulation can give broadband results. Finally, the FDTD algorithm scales well with parallelization, so it is well suited to modern, multi-core and multi-processor computers, as well as high-performance computing HPC clusters. Because FDTD is so versatile, it can address a wide range of applications. These include photonic crystals, plasmonics, CMOS image sensors, nanoparticle scattering and absorption, nanopattern solar cells, OLEDs and LEDs, gratings, lithography, metamaterials and integrated optics, to name just a few. You will notice that all of these applications involve wavelength-scaled structure.